Hey family, I'm going to give you all a chance to hop on really quickly. We are talking consecration tonight. Um, some of us from, that are in the, uh, I'm having a brain fart, y'all, the uh, book study, right? Some of us in the book study have decided to do a three-day fast. So we started the fast today, and it will be today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And this is a fast to get closer to the Lord. Um, as we were talking on Thursday in our weekly live for the Battle Fill of the Mind book study, um, we kind of, the, the Lord shifted us into another direction, right? And so we just started... Uh, really talking about what we were seeing, what we were sensing from the Holy Spirit. And many of us have been feeling this press too fast, right? And so from that, we started this fast. The fast day one started today. And so today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we will be fasting. Today and tomorrow, I will go live in this group, right? So tonight, I'm going to talk briefly on consecration, what is it? What does it mean? And how do we do it, right? How do we consecrate ourselves before the Lord? Tomorrow, I will be talking about hearing the voice of the Lord. And so in your fasting and as you consecrate, which we'll talk about tonight, as you consecrate yourself, as you kind of surrender, submit yourself to the Lord, um, it's very important that you know how to hear his voice, that you know what his voice sounds like and how he communicates with you. And so that is what we will talk about tomorrow. And then on Thursday in our chat, we're going to talk about going in, growing in intimacy with the Lord. Um, and that's going to be in the book study group. So in our, our week of the Zooms that we do every week, um, this week, we're going to be talking about how can we grow in deeper intimacy with the Lord. I do feel like over the past few weeks, there has really been this press to um, just get into the face of the Lord to really um, consecrate ourselves, right? Which is what we're going to talk about and to hear God. I feel like there are a lot of things that are going to be shifting. There's some places that he wants to bring us into. And so it's our responsibility as his children to really get um, in the face of the Lord uh, and to hear what he's saying so that he can give us clear direction. I can just say in this first day of fasting, I began to feel, you know, the shifting. And so, um, like I said, tonight, we're just going to talk a little bit about consecration. What is it? Like, what is consecration? When we say consecrate yourself. So I'm going to give you guys a brief definition of what that means. So in the Bible, the word consecration means the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with a perfect God. Consecration also carries the connotation of sanctification, holiness, or purity. Now, I'm not going to go through the sanctification, um, holiness, and purity aspect, right? All of these are, are aspects of um, consecration, right? But they have their own qualities. But um, yeah, so consecration, I'm going to say it again, is the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with a perfect God. And so when we talk about consecrating ourselves, we're really talking about um, getting to the core of anything that may be causing a separation between us and God. Sometimes it's sin, sometimes it's just distractions, right? So sometimes it could be that we are in disobedience or we're operating in open, you know, in sin, but then sometimes it could be a, a distraction or things that come to keep us busy so we don't have the quiet time to sit and hear the voice of the Lord or things that may come to try to make us uh, get off course. Uh, but being consecrated is a critical component in our relationship to God and to those in the world. Paul tells us, therefore, I urge you, brethren, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, right? That's consecration, and pleasing or acceptable to the Lord. But this is your spiritual act of worship, 
right? Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's what the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And so when we're talking about consecration, there are benefits to consecrating ourselves, right? And so I want to read 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 16 through 18. I'm going to read that and we're going to break it down to give you a clear vision of just some of the benefits of consecration, right? Uh, we know that consecration is a separation. So 2 Corinthians um, 6, 16 through 18 says, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? And we know we just read in Romans that our body is a temple of the Lord, right? Um, so what agreement is there or what, what likeness is there between the temple of God, which is us, and an idol? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will get, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty, uh, said the Lord Almighty. And so some of the benefits, I'm going to give you guys four benefits uh, based off the scripture of consecration because we're separating ourselves from any unclean thing. And like I said, an unclean thing, sometimes we think about a thing being unclean that's um, sin or something that's demonic. Sometimes an unclean thing can be um, being in the presence of anything else more than you're in the presence of the Lord, right? Because what we feed will lead us. And so if we're constantly on social media, if we're constantly uh, really in conversations and having um, relationships or conversations that do not glorify God, that is an unclean thing. And I'll give you an example. If you are constantly or if you have been around or are around people who are gossipers, right, or people who are constantly negative, those negative words are un is an unclean thing because those words feed into your spirit. And the more they feed into your spirit, like you by you hearing, right, faith comes by hearing here by the word of God. Hey, how you doing? So the more you hear those words, right? The more those words come in to you, it defiles your temple. There's a scripture, I, I can't remember if it's in Exodus or, or not, but it talks about how bitterness defiles. And so the unclean thing will defile us. And so when we are consecrating ourselves, we are making the conscious effort to purify our gates, to purify and separate ourselves from any unclean thing. And I'll give you about six tips that you can uh, do at the end to begin to consecrate yourself. Because sometimes, um, yeah, to consecrate yourselves. But one of the benefits of consecration, right? Uh, because sometimes we look at that as an old world term, right? And one of those old timey, old school terms that they say back in the day, consecrate yourself, live holy, there really is a benefit to it, right? Um, one of the benefits of consecration or really setting yourself apart, intentionally setting yourself apart, um, is that one, it increases intimacy with the Lord, right? When you look at 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, it says, for we are the temple of the living God, and as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. And so he's speaking to us when he's saying that, right? If you look at this scripture, this scripture takes me into, puts me into the mind of when Adam and Eve were walking with God in the cool of the day before the fall. They were in oneness and in deep intimacy with the Lord. There was no separation. They were naked and unashamed. 
And us separating ourselves allows us to really hone in on the voice of the Lord and allow God to begin to deal with anything that would separate us from him that would serve as a distraction or a barrier. And he becomes, again, our God. Now, some of you may say, well, I, I love God. I hear God. I, I spend time with the Lord. But there's always a deeper place, a deeper place of intimacy, a deeper place of grace, a deeper place of love, um, just deeper relationship that we go. As believers, we are to go from glory to glory. And so our glory to glory is deeper intimacy, deeper communication, deeper um, oneness with the Lord. And so when the scripture says that I will live with them, think about somebody that lives in your house, right? Um, you see them daily. You spend time with them daily. Or or I know for me with my daughter, I see my daughter every day. Uh, I talk with my daughter every day. I commune. I sit. I talk with my daughter like she's over there on the couch. Like my daughter is uh, someone that lives with me, right? So I know her. I know what she likes. I know what she doesn't like. I know her personality. So when we commune, when we um, consecrate ourselves, we are now stepping into this realm of um, just intimacy, right? Uh, it, it, this realm of intimacy where we can get to know God more, where we can walk with him in the cool of the day, right? Where we can um, see and learn who he is even the more as our God and who we are as his people, which leads me to the next thing of the next benefit of consecration. The second benefit is that it creates this atmosphere where God can dwell, right? This atmosphere and this environment, I don't know about you, but depending on kind of what your life looks like, uh, there are times where you are you experience a chaotic environment, right? Um, sometimes you may be moving fast and it seems like stuff is just happening. You may feel anxious. You may feel frustrated. There may be things that's happening left and right. And so you feel up in arms and you feel like um, there's no peace within your atmosphere. It's like something is always happening all the time. Well, through consecration, one of the benefits is that you create this atmosphere that represents the kingdom. The manifestation of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. So as you consecrate yourself, as you get before the Lord and you consecrate, you separate yourself from any unclean thing, you begin to create this environment that matches the atmosphere of heaven. And so that's why that's another benefit. This environment that promotes peace, that promotes um, joy, that promotes righteousness as the standard, right? And we're not talking about being self-righteous, thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to in the flesh. We're talking about the righteousness that comes through communing and the relationship that we have with the Lord. And so one uh, benefit is that it increases intimacy with the Lord. The second benefit is that it creates an atmosphere um, where God can dwell. Or it creates, consecration creates the atmosphere of heaven in our lives. The third thing, uh, the third benefit that I'm going to give you guys tonight um, is that it affirms our identity. When we consecrate ourselves, if you uh, struggle with feeling like an orphan or feeling like um, you're you're alone, you don't have a father, you don't have a mother, feeling like uh, struggling with rejection and abandonment, we know that as believers, we are engrafted into the kingdom of God's dear son. So we are children of God right? We are joint heirs with Jesus. If there's a time where you struggle with knowing that, right? Or you struggle with really believing it, as you separate yourself from any unclean thing, as you consecrate yourself, you uh, it affirms your identity. How do we know this? Because um, 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, therefore come out from them and be separated, right? Says the Lord. Says, touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. We know that we are received. We are taken in. We are received and engrafted into the kingdom of God's dear son. But then 18 does us one thing better, right? It says, I will be a father to you, right? And we know the role of a father, the job of a father is to give identity, um, to protect and provide. And so if you're ever feeling in a place where like you, you don't feel fathered, you don't feel protected, 
you don't feel like you know who you are. You don't know your purpose. You're trying to figure out what your direction in life is because as a father gives identity, he lays out the plans of your life. When the father gives you identity, right? Identity, protection, and provision, it he names you, right? So in this consecration phase, um, it allows God to take you in for you to really know because he you automatically when you come into the kingdom, you are a child of the most high God. He wants to commune with you. He wants to know you. So when you consecrate yourself, you are inviting God to really show you who he is as your father, as the one that protects as the one that uh, provides, as the one that gives languaging to your identity, right? Where your mother and father forsake you, he is there to lift you up. So if there's any time where you felt rejected or you felt abandoned, you felt like you weren't worthy or you're not valuable, in that consecration time, the Lord, he affirms that, he reaffirms exactly who you are, even in those places where you've been shaky, right? The fourth benefit that I'm going to give you is that um, consecration reveals the perfect will of God. Now, how do we know this? When we read Romans, and I'm going to go to it again, right? When we read Romans uh, chapter 12, 1 and 2, it says, give me one second. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living. Okay, no, let me change the version. That was the New Living Translation, which I don't like it. Um, so let's see. Let's we'll go here. Okay, so this is the New King James Version. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable worship, right? Presenting our bodies to God is our reasonable worship, right? So consecration is an act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may pro prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when you present yourself, your body as a living sacrifice, right? That requires that you um, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. That transformation happens through separation. That separation is the whole is separating ourselves um, or consecrating ourselves to holiness, right? Um, so as we consecrate ourselves, as we separate ourselves, when we um, separate ourselves from any unclean thing, we are now able to hear the voice of the Lord. We are now able to hear his voice clearly. A lot of times people will struggle with um, knowing what the will of God is because one, they don't read the word, but two, we are so busy and we're moving so much that we don't take time out to really sit in here. We don't separate ourselves, right? Um, we don't consecrate ourselves so that we can hear the Lord clear. We don't consecrate or separate, separate ourselves but from, from unclean things because of the, the things of this world, right? Because we have families sometimes and we have different things that happen. And so when we are talking about consecrating ourselves this week, these uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have two more days, Tuesday and Wednesday. When we talk about consecrating ourselves on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, we're talking about intentionally separating ourselves, intentionally um, taking out time to sit to spend time with, to pray, to read, and really ask the Lord to show us what is happening within us um, that he wants to deal with. And so we're going to get into what are some ways that we can consecrate ourselves, right? And I'm going to give you maybe three or four um, ways that you can begin to consecrate yourselves, right? 
Number one, you can make the decision, right? Make the decision to dedicate or rededicate your heart to the Lord. Now, you may already be a believer, so this does not mean that you are not saved. It does not mean that you have not accepted Jesus. What, what it means is there, as a believer, we go through things, stuff happens, life happens, that splits our affection, right? So, um... And this could look like the Lord pulling us into this place to pray and spend time with him. But instead, we still sleep it because we just want a few more hours. Or it could be the Lord pulling us and wanting to uh, 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 pulling us and giving us a scripture that we really need to study. But instead of us studying the scripture, we watch TV or we're scrolling on our phone. Right. We're checking out and we're scrolling on <coughs> social media. This, these, this is a sign that our affection is split, right? Because when you really love somebody, if they say, hey, like you, you, you're like right there hanging on their lips, right? That's what love does. Love makes you hunger to want to be where the person is. When you love somebody, like you want to be in their presence, you want to be around them. When you are in love with them, you want to be with them. You want to hear their voice. You want to sing sweet nothings. Whether you sing or not, it's like it gives you this melody. That's the type of love. That's the type of um, devotion that you want to get back to as you consecrate yourself. And so um, making the decision really to recommit your heart to the Lord. God, I, I recommit myself to you. I give my heart to you, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is to begin to reflect on your motives. Sometimes we do things um, and we don't even really know why we do them. Or sometimes we do them and our motive is not in alignment with the will of God, right? And so during this time of consecration, reflect on your motives. Why do you do what you do? Are you really serving at church because you love the Lord? Or are you serving because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do uh, because you say, right? Are you really... Um, visiting the sick because you have a heart that's like God's heart and you want to please God? Or are you visiting the sick at the check mark to check this off of your list to say, hey, I did my good deed for today, right? Um, so yeah, checking your motives and asking God to highlight anything in your heart that is not like him, giving him permission to come into your heart because God is not going to force anything on you. But giving him permission to come into your heart and say, Lord, if there's anything in me that does not reflect you, that does not look like you, that does not make my environment, my temple conducive to your spirit being able to dwell in and through me, highlight it and show me what it is, right? Um, and help me. And then the third thing you do is repent. Because through consecration, we are not perfect. There should be something that you should be repenting of. And if you like, I'm good, I don't need to repent, you need to repent for pride, right? Because we are not perfect. And there is something in there. Because there wouldn't be this pull to consecration if there wasn't something that God wanted to change, shift, or, or do within you, right? Um, so repent. Repentance is a good thing right? It removes legal grounds. It gives you freedom. It helps you to flow and be who God called you to be. And I think the fourth thing, um, I'll, I'll, the fourth thing is um, separating yourself, right? And we talked about separating ourselves uh, in consecration, but the way that you can separate yourself is cutting down on your time on social media, fasting, right? We're fasting this week. Uh, we're doing a juice fast, right? And so we're fasting from eight to five um, water and juice only. No food between that time. After that, you can break your fast. Eat if the Holy Spirit leads you to eat or uh, or eat whatever you want to, however you feel you need to eat. But we're going to do that from eight, uh, eight to five and we're praying. Um, during that time, reading, studying and all of that. Um, and if you want to join in on the chat that we have, let us know. Let me know in the comments. You can send me a message. You can post it in the group and uh, we'll add you, right? But um, fasting, right? Fasting kills your flesh so that you can hear. Um, separating yourself. If there's conversations or people, like if you're like a really uh, extroverted person, you love being around people, this may be a time where you sacrifice that uh, time with people for time with the Lord, right? 
Um, getting up early to pray is a way that you can intentionally focus your sights on the Lord and consecrate yourself. Um, there's so many ways that you can separate yourself, right? Um, even in, um, I was reading this morning in Matthew 1 and 35, it talked about how Jesus rose early to pray, right? He left everyone he departed. It said, uh, it's Mark 1 and 35. It says, now in the morning, having risen a great while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place to pray. So departing from others and finding a solitary place, a place where it's just you and God to pray is consecration. Um, and the last thing which we're going to talk about on Thursday is drawing near to God. And that's growing in intimacy, which we're going to talk about on Thursday. And so this is the end of our, our little, um, our teaching for today, right? Um, I will be on again tomorrow and we're going to talk about hearing the voice of the Lord. I encourage you all to go back and watch this, take notes, read, uh, uh, look up some of the scriptures, uh, meditate on them as we go throughout the next few days. Um, if you choose to fast, great. If you choose not to fast and you just want to um, just partake in the, the consecration piece, you can definitely do that as well. But really growing in intimacy and creating this space of fluidity where God can flow freely in and through us is our goal, right? So thank you all for watching. I will see you guys again tomorrow night at eight o'clock, same time, uh, where we will be talking about how you can grow in hearing the voice of the Lord. But until then, have a great night and I will talk to you really soon. Bye-bye.